You bend down to who? Right. You are so jealous of this family. Exactly. You are so jealous of this family. If the marriage doesn't work, we can't divorce and everyone is going to be safe. Go to Istanbul. It's a word of God. See how many gay people are you talking about? Word of God. Are you talking about word of God? That's not the word of God, mate. Christianity is not the word of God. We know the culture, brother. And now that we still say it's Haram, we still say it's one of our biggest Haram. I'm from Istanbul. I'm from Istanbul. I was born and bred there. Go there, man shagging man. Woman shagging woman. Yeah, but in your religion, what? Is that they call themselves a Muslim? Is it okay in your religion or not? Is it okay? No, I don't have that. Your poems are married gay people. Of course not. Your poems are married gay people. Why are you married? Why are you priest fuck, 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 fuck young kids? Uh, you, no, no, yeah. Don't use that language. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, Would you, if when a Muslim blows up people, civilians, are they behaving like Muslims? No, or? they're not. No. Right. So if but someone, if, but if, if, so, if you go to one second, this mistake, if, one second. About your mistake so if also. someone does something against their own faith, yeah. is it fair then yeah. to accuse them as if they're doing what their faith teaches them? Who, do, who, do, who the took him more about? Who took him more about our forties? Who You're who saying? Who all who's saying that the Muslims? He's agreeing with you. He's agreeing with you. Yeah, I am with you. I am saying he's agreeing with you. I am saying it is unfair. At least one time we have a certain character agreeing with you. It is unfair. Well done. 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 It is unfair. Three minutes, three minutes, three minutes, three minutes. No problem. Yeah, going backwards and forwards. That's nice. That's okay? Nice. And what I would suggest, because a lot of what happens, sadly, amongst certain people within the Dawah team, is that they will ask questions but not answer them. So I would suggest speaking that... Speaking about yourself? Yeah, no, no, no. no. I'm speaking about the Dawah team. No, no. I made that question. We know who does that. Yeah. The Christians tell us. Anyway, anyway, yeah. anyway, yeah. 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 anyway, at the end of the three minutes, if I ask a question, you begin your three minutes by addressing the question, and vice versa. Fair enough. Is that all right? Sure. Okay, so, so we need a so, timer. So Someone is going to time it. what is the proposal? It. Because we are debating on something you don't agree on. Okay, I agree. agree. No, no, no. I'm, you may be trying to debate something that I agree and you agree on already, so there's no debate. Okay. So what are you trying to make a proposal of a debate? What are you arguing? The, the, the agreed debate that's on camera, no, no. that we will what look is at it that we are the New Testament debating? whether it teaches the divinity of Christ. That is not what I was debating or asking for a debate. That, 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 uh, are you running, Mansour? No, 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 no. Are you running, Mansour? Hang on, hang on, hang on.
and we look at what the Quran says about Christ. No, no that, em that embraces know, what you're talking no, about. We want to know who God really Mansour is. Mansour is running so away. That is He's not, not just. Away. Mansour is that is away. not. I mean, this is an inferiority complex admission. The moment you start speaking Matches to your opponent, your superiority not, complex. I'm, I haven't got a superiority yeah, yes, or inferiority in any complex. Yeah. I'm just highlighting your complex nature that you have. You have so, complexity. Have we, complex got, have we got a camera yet? Content over everything. There we go. So you are happy. No, he's happy. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. I will get a Sidawa. Yeah, let a Sidawa come. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, yeah. we want to establish who God is, not only textually, but rationally. Reasonable, with intellect, reason, mind, and text. We want to know who the real God is, who is worthy of worship, not Amen. just any God, philosophical. We want to know who God is really worthy of worship. The God that you worship, in the concept that you have, whether you are a Trinitarian or a Unitarian, There's whatever only you are. Trinitarian Christians, bro. Sorry. There's only Trinitarian. Christians. So, no, some so in, in in planet Earth, there's no Unitarian Christians. There are Unitarians, but they're not Christians. Oh, so they might consider you not Christians yeah. because you're a Trinitarian. Their opinion doesn't matter. Your opinion doesn't matter as well. I'm sure it doesn't today. I'm sure it doesn't today. I'm sure it doesn't today. You need to be consistent. No, no, no I am consistent. Anyway, so the debate, the debate. No, no, no. Relax. Let, no, no. Let, let, let Mansour, Mansour, Mansour. Mansour, we're waiting for Because this is just a prologue, right? We have content yeah. over everything, which is which is recognized oh, as neutral. Now we need to see So now we just need someone who's willing to do the timing. Yeah. So, it, so do you agree that we are going to discuss right. and debate on who God is really worthy of worship? Which concept of God yeah. is worthy of worship? The concept that you hold in your belief or the concept that we have in Islam? No, the, the debate that you were challenged to on camera was about whether the New Testament showed that Jesus is God. Now you've already said that there are indications, so let us plumb the depths of those indications. I'm not interested. I already said and the discussion. So you that it can embrace what uh, you're saying. So it can embrace uh, what you're uh, saying. Uh, let us listen. also include what the Quran says about Jesus as well. This is the how it's not going to work. I am not interested. Mansour is running I, away, guys. I am not, not interested away. in your assumed belief about my position. I clearly said what my position is, and I said if you really want to debate. Who you worship, let's do that because what is the most central, what is the most crucial thing about salvation? Having the right concept of God. If you fail in getting the right concept of God, is that going to save you in the hereafter? No, you not. It's, it, it, you will not. So what I am proposing to you, if you are not going to run away, using your one words, if you are man enough to stand up to the challenge, let us discuss and debate which concepts of God between yours and mine Mansour. is the right concept? Mansour. Who indeed is worthy of worship? Mansour. Are you up for this? Challenge? Mansour has already run away from my debate. Mansour has already run away from my debate. Mansour is on camera as being willing to debate the divinity of Christ. It's on camera and we will edit it so that people can see where Mansour yeah, agrees to that debate. You sent someone back to me and said, what will be the topic of debate? I gave that information to them and now here you are to have that debate and you're running away. Excuse so, me, stop, stop, stop. Hold on one second, hold on one second. Who came to if me about you, your topic? No one. You, so again, if another you one are man enough Excuse to me. debate this topic, your position is, your position that you have just stated right now is that there are indications in the New Testament that Jesus is agree? God. I contend to you that those indications are crystal clear. And that is the proposed debate. Sure. So if I, if I said there are indications in the New Testament, so we both agree, what's there to debate? The level of the indications. Not interested. I'm interested He's running in from the debate. <laughs> I'm interested but in. But it's a worthy admission. Excuse me. And so it's a worthy admission. Isn't that, that the he admission admits of the scholars? That the New Testament Hang on. shows that? that Jesus is divine. I think something that Muslims like Zakia Naik have been denying oh, again, for years. Again, a Mansour your contradicts okay. Zakia Naik. Okay, to call you as a cartoon because you don't give uh, your name. Okay, okay. So, Mr. Cartoon, you seem to be. Only speaking with people who you think that they're the scholars, your scholars, secular scholars, they've already put forward this study. 
of Christology in the New Testament. So you assume the Muslims that you speak to, that's it. They are the, you know, the sayers, they, they are the spokesperson of scholarship. Scholarship tells us what the New Testament indicates as to what Christ is depicted as. So what I'm saying, having understood this scholarship on this issue, you both, you and I agree that there are indications within it. And let us debate what the Quran says about Jesus. That will allow you to marshal your argument. And rather than accept the challenge, all you've done is create this red herring about me not agreeing to debate. Let us debate what the New Testament says about the identity of Christ and what the Quran says about the identity of Christ. You have your opportunity, I think therefore, you misunderstood. to marshal your Quranic arguments at your own choosing. I think you misunderstood. So shall you we stop debating about debating on, on. and actually have a debate? Do you know what you've misunderstood? <coughs> you are proposing a debate where what does our book say about God? I am saying that is not what we're going to discuss. We want to discuss having those indications or clear texts in our respective books who indeed is worthy of worship, the true God. We need to bring the true God out of those scriptures, yours and mine. If your scripture clearly says God is a trinity, is he worthy of worship? That is the question. That is the debate that no, I'm that proposing. No, that is a different debate, Master. That is the debate. No. You're running from the debate that you agreed to. No, I and you're going to look a fool when we show the you clip the where yeah, you, you agree. Mansour is running from the debate. I've never agreed to the debate. You have. No, I haven't. You have. Because I came up when Mansour was doing his Dawah thing of finding tourists who didn't know how to defend their faith. I came into that conversation. I came to Mansour, a member of the Dawah thing. So I came to him and I challenged him and he said, we will have a debate about the divinity of Christ. And then as he walked away making his excuses the first time we were meant to have this debate, he sent someone back to me and that person said, what will be the topic of the debate? And I said, what the New Testament teaches about Christ's identity. Why? Because Mansour had been arguing from the New Testament that Jesus wasn't God. Why was he willing to do it then against a tourist, but he's not willing to do it against me now? What's changed, Mansour? I'll tell you what's changed. It's because you know full well it's a debate that you will lose. Absolutely! It's a debate you will lose. It's a debate you will lose. You're a cartoon, right? Okay. This is what you expect from a cartoon character. You're doing really well, Now, what we are saying is this. If you really think you're a someone who wins the debate, <laughs> the win, winning of a debate is in your mind, which you have already settled the debate degree debate. I said, we want to have a debate which is meaningful, which is fruitful, which is beneficial. This benefit is not benefit of this life only, but this is benefit for you and me in the hereafter. Because in the day of judgment, Mr. Cartoon, you need when help. God asks you, he why did you worship this God that you've made up from your scripture, or you have somehow understood from the scripture, would you have a leg to stand upon justifying your belief? That's the question. So if you really want to debate what does the Bible say about, you might as well go and debate the scholarship who have already told you who he is mm. understood in the New Testament. I am not interested in what is the depiction of Christ. I am more to debate you on this topic of what? Who is worthy of worship from the respective understanding of God from your scripture, from our scripture? Indeed, the question is, does your scripture portray the real true God? The God of reality, the God who created everything, or is your God a concept that is made up okay. by man? Is Mansour, your God I'll give a you another chance. That is made up by <laughs> Is your God a concept that is made up 
by the people Christians have made up God our concept of God. That's what he said. That's what he said. He's just made that point. So I will give him the opportunity to debate that claim. I'll give you the opportunity now, Mansour, to debate whether there is any evidence, whether there is any evidence for our beliefs in the New Testament, or whether we are just making it up. So, Mansour, every time you have run from this debate and pronounced a position that you believe, I've given you the opportunity to debate it. I'm giving you the opportunity now to debate this claim that you've made. Yeah, the yeah, idea yeah. that we have just made up our beliefs. Yeah, that. that we have simply invented it and that there is no sub re substantial reason to believe it from the text. Did you finish listening to the last Do you want to debate that? Wait a second. He did it. Did, did, did you? Bother Mate. listening Listen. to the last few Did statements. you say that to him? Yeah. Last no, few no, statements. No, no, but you're not listening. I, I said. I don't think you told him to shut up when he was heckling no, either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. always yeah. the same with the Dawa team. Yeah. Always the same. Yeah. Yeah. They heckle, you're they interrupt, the but then you're they, they play possum when you interrupt them. That's not heckling. Your The problem I am finding right now is your selective hearing. <laughs> As I was making clear that I am saying people, the scribes, the authors of these Gospels, they are the ones who have introduced these concepts. I am not saying you introduce because I know Christians also introduce concepts about God, about Christ from the same book and they arrive at different conclusions. That's why you have Unitarians. That's why you have Trinitarians. That's why you have Jehovah's Witnesses. They all have different beliefs about Christ and about God. So don't tell me that I'm accusing you of making up. You might as well have made up many things about God from the same source that you all hold in your own hands. I'm simply saying you are not willing for a reason. The reason is you are not interested in eternal salvation. You're not interested in the truth. You're not interested. You're not interested. Characterization. Excuse me. Characterizations. You're not interested. Because if you were interested, characterization. Which God is worthy of worship? You would say yes. Characterization. Let us discuss. Mansour, this is where Mansour's supremacy complex comes through. He says to me, "I'm not interested in debating those things." Well, actually, oh, he is. according to our faith, okay, I'm mistaken, he is. That the I that. what you believe about the identity of Christ affects your salvation. So I am inviting him to debate a topic that affects his salvation. But he wants to use characterizations. But nonetheless, this debate about debating has proven some fruit. We have an admission from Mansour that all the Dawa team that have been arguing that this collection of books does not prove the divinity of Christ are wrong. That actually there are indications in this book that show that Christ is divine. Thank you, Mansour, for that admission. We also have the admission from Mansour. That this than just inventing our faith. It is based on these texts. Within the span of so, only a few minutes. Mansour uses, Mansour uses characterization. He is running away from a debate that he agreed. And I've changed the topic of the debate to accommodate the positions that he made in the last 20 minutes. The cameras will show that. I've allowed him to bring in the Quran and what the Quran refutes about the Bible, which is what he said he wanted to do. I've allowed him to debate whether we Christians are just inventing our belief, something that he then did a 180 on when I said I was willing to debate it. Mansour is running away from a debate. I'm going to give him one last chance. One last chance. Do you want to debate no, 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 about what the Quran says about Jesus Christ and what the New Testament says about Jesus Christ? What we have realized 
is what you call as a game show. This is what you're. This is what you're. Running. Are. This is running. Hang on. This is all you're capable of as a cartoon character. Man saw right? shuffles. Right, listen. <laughs> Instead of how many times did I say? Instead of. Look. Have you ever read the Quran? Does the Quran not say? It's in Arabic. How can I read it? Uh, oh, are those the Quran? No, it's translation. Okay, the Quran. What language? He asked me if I read the Quran, no translation of the Bible. Also, he says only exists in Arabic. Okay, Joe. What language of the Bible? Your Bible was being translated. What language of the Bible was written? It was written in Greek and Hebrew. Do you read Greek and Hebrew? This is the foolishness of the Muslims. This is the foolishness of the Muslims around me. You take your beliefs about your book and you simply impose them on ours as if our beliefs match yours in symmetry or reflection. They do not. We make different oh, claims about relax, our beliefs relax. than you make about no, yours. No, relax, so relax, Mansour's relax. argument relax. is flawed. How? Relax! Flawed! Calm down, calm down. And no, that is no, how he behaves. As I was speaking. That is how he behaves. As I was He's basing his argument relax, on talking. characterization. So I asked you a question. So Mansour, can I, can I are we debating something now? Can I finish? Are we debating can something? Can I finish? What language because is the only, Arabic? What language is the Quran in? What language is the Quran in? What language is the Quran in? Arabic. What language is the Quran in? Arabic. What's wrong with you? What language is the Quran in? Do you have a problem? What language is the Quran in? What language is the Quran in? He just said Arabic. I didn't hear it. What language is the Quran in? Do you have a problem? No, not at all. Good. Stop and listen. Right. Answer the question then. Stop and listen. Answer my question. No, you need to stop and listen. No. Answer my question. I'm not going to do I'm not your I'm I am, I am, Answer my I'm, question. I am what language willing, is the Quran in? I'm you know what language is Arabic? Okay. You know. He's going to answer my question about the language of the Quran. I'm willing to answer if you keep quiet for a few seconds so you will hear the answer. Okay. As I was saying before I asked you this question, have you read? And you said, how could I have read it if it in Arabic? So I asked you, have you read the Bible? The same logic applies if you no, have it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Don't, don't interrupt. No, it doesn't. Because we don't make the claims about our Bible that you make about your Quran. It's a different set of beliefs and you're superimposing categories How that are correct to, to Islam when you're about upon to make a, a different faith. That's like me saying that you worship Muhammad. Right. So it would be a nonsensical you statement you to because you have different you beliefs. You're just having a shout right. match. You're not right. that makes no sense. Instead of discussing about the worthy <laughs> nature of God, who is worthy of worship, who truly is worthy of worship, you seem to go into this mode of, does the scripture say he's God or not? Imagine asking a Muslim. Because you but were debating you Christian. Were Again, you know, let me finish. Mansour. Let me finish. Mansour, yeah, go finish your point and I'll reply. Imagine, imagine okay. coming to, imagine you coming to a Muslim, God, Allah is God. Does the Quran say Allah is God? Show me, show me, show me. Yeah, this is like silly. Why? If Allah is God, you would expect the book to say that he is God. Agreed. Hang on. Right. So yeah. what you are doing is this. You are saying our Bible says this and Muslims denies that. I am simply telling you, look, the Quran, which you haven't read in its translations. I have says, read in its translations, actually. Oh, good then. Have you read multiple translations? Have you read the multiple translations of the Quran, which says Allah says about Christ that he is not God, that he's not part of a trinity. And it says desist. It is better for you for your God is one God. One. So why would Allah in the Quran make mentions of these one beliefs phrase. if that belief didn't exist in your Christian tradition, either in your books or in your oral tradition or otherwise? So obviously, the Quran is, is quite yeah. familiar with the erroneous belief that God is the Trinity of some kind, that God is Jesus or Jesus is God. Quran refutes them. Let me be clear, I, ladies and gentlemen. No, you're just talking, Mansour. I am not finished. Let me be clear no, why I'm challenging Mansour. So, so, so we Mansour was challenged the hard definition. 
He was challenged to have this debate because he was arguing with a Christian that the New Testament did not teach the divinity of Jesus. That's not correct. Let me correct that is actually what he was no, doing. Let me tell you what, that is you what he was doing. No, and when we show the clip, now it is appropriate. When we show the clip, when we show the clip, you will see that. No, no, no. We have seen countless times. Hashim. Mansour, Mohammed Hijab, Shamsi, going down saying that the New Testament does not teach the divinity the of Christ. This, now we have an admission from Mansour exactly that it that does. Question. Thank you very much. You mm. So we yeah, should, from tonight, like this, yeah? from Both tonight, this, this is never ever see Mansour Bob arguing Bob. that the New Testament does not teach the divinity of Christ. You see how Thanks it's changed to my statement? Okay, to God, no, I saw you do these debates. Your own record as having these debates. Now, to correct you on two counts, the last one here, that you are somehow thinking the, the Bible somehow depicts in black and white Christ is God and the Christian that I was speaking to. Right, wrong in both counts. I'll challenge you on that debate then. The Christian. He's made a premise that the Bible does not teach in black and white that Jesus is God. I challenge you to debate that point. The Christian that I was having a discussion with was bringing verses from the Bible which clearly did not support that Jesus was divine. This is what I was showing. In fact, all the time that we discuss with Christian friends in Speaker's Corner, Christian friends comes along and say, look, this is how our book portrays that Christ is God. What we demonstrate from their own verses that they bring, that these verses are insufficient, inadequate, ambiguous, to even depict that Christ was divine in any shape or form. And this is what I have been doing. You can see my videos that are already out there. And people who I've been discussed with, discussing with, they've acknowledged in various times that yes, this is not a clear indication of divinity in the verses they bring. For example, let me give you... No, Manso. No, 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 no Manso. No. I will Manso show you has the end of the debate. For Every example, single time Mansour has made a point. He, he has made a premise. He has made, made a statement of fact. I have offered him to debate that tonight, like he just did when he said that it is totally false that the New Testament says in black and white that Jesus is God. I offered him a debate on that. I offered him a debate on the Quranic refutation of the New Testament. I offered him a debate on the original topic and rather than debate that, Mansour would sooner debate the idea of debating. <laughs> and his, Ma Mansour's shuffle is worthy of Muhammad Ali's shuffle because he just dances away, he distracts everyone from the possibility of a real debate. I'm sorry guys, okay. I came to debate Here's Mansour, my proposal, then. Okay. I give up. Here's my proposal. I give up. Go on, one more proposal. You need to establish in black and white, as you said, that Jesus is the only true God of Israel according to Christ's own admission. Are you ready to debate that? That is my debate proposal to you. That in black and white, you will debate me and establish. If I'm proven wrong, I will accept it. No problem. That's your book. I may be mistaken. So, are you ready to debate this proposal? That Jesus Christ is the only true God of Israel according to Christ's own admission in the New Testament. I will debate. Are you, are you running away? No. Yes, no, not at all. No, no, yes, not at all. The topic of debate. The topic of debate will include the entirety of the New Testament, not just the bit that Mansour wishes to restrict it to. Do you agree to that? No, I just said. Do, do, do you know what I said? I heard what you said. So I heard what you said. The proposal yeah, you, you didn't say yes or no. Your new proposal. No, no, not new proposal. Your new proposal. Because you keep. How many proposals have I made to you? No, Mansour. How many proposals have I made and tonight? He made Mr. Car too. No, he's made a few actually. Yes, the car too. You're not accepting. I said. Okay. There were two proposals. One about which concepts of God, or which God is worthy of worship, which you were not willing to debate. I know why. Because you're not interested in the truth and salvation. 
park that thought for a Let's moment. Let's do your question. The second proposal that I'm offering the you The question is this. about whether Jesus well, is the God of Israel wait, wait, wait. using the entire proposal. New Testament. Okay, listen, Bobo. Listen. Are you happy with that? The second proposal I am putting it for. Do you want to do that? Are you listening? Mansour. Are you listening? I heard what you said. Yes, I heard what you said. What did I say? You said, let us debate whether according to Christ's own testimony he is the God, the one true God of Israel. Are you ready for that? And I am exactly. saying let us use yes the no? entire New Testament to do it. Yeah. Do you agree? No yeah. Done. Yeah. We got a debate. Yeah. Yeah. Finally. So because you need to establish that three minutes it's your first. Okay. Remember, black and white. <laughs> black Meaning and white. Unambiguous. Unambiguous, yes. black and white. So let us start then. In the writings of the three epistles. Minutes. Wait, we need a timer. Yeah, yeah he's got three minutes. Does okay. have let me just let me just tell you some reading. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, make sure he gets them seconds. Let me let me just. Need them. I, yeah, I don't I don't want to I don't want to waste seconds timer. finding it. No, no, that's fine. There's no timer. There's a debate. Oh, no, and then he's gonna time it. There's no timer. No time yeah, there is a timer. Three minutes debate, mate. There's no timer. Yeah, there is. Three minutes. There is. He was already uh, there is a timer. Yeah, there is a timer. I agreed. Okay. Right at the beginning. Okay. For how many? How many back and forth are we gonna do? How many times? You make it forty minutes. Um, how many? One hour. One hour? No, Three minutes in one hour. Three minutes time in one hour? Is that are you six? happy with that? That's ten times, right? Yeah, good. Quick violence. Is that how long it will take to establish in black and white? Yeah. You should no. have three minutes! I'm getting tired with your... That's done. I, I, I feel, I feel Mansour's trying to duck out the argument no, already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I feel Mansour's trying to duck out the argument already. It's taking an hour to find it. It's taking an hour. He's got one. You know, normally I find this really quickly. No, I should have paper. Where's paper, boy? I mean, I'm sorry, need paper. Okay, so we're ready to begin. Go. Right. So, Mansour said, show me in black and white that Jesus is God. In black and white. Don't interrupt Mansour. He's interrupting already. He's interrupting already. And so is the Dawah team. This is how they behave all the time. All the time. Black and white. Black and white. Three minutes. This is all it took. Looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. Black and white. Reference. Jesus is called God. Reference. Titus chapter 1 verses 13 to 14. This is echoed also by Peter. In 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 1 to 2. Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours, by the righteousness of our God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Black and white, ladies and gentlemen. Our God and Saviour. Our God and Saviour. Our God and Saviour. It cannot be any clearer in terms of human language. And who was writing? Paul, an apostle, a Jew, a Jew who was a Pharisee, a Jew who went to the temple to worship and went to dispute in the synagogues to his own people, the Jews. So a Jew is saying that Jesus Christ is his God and Saviour black and white and that took me less than three minutes right, less point. than three minutes not an hour less than three minutes so the question that i would like to ask mansoor to begin his three minutes on is who is being described as god in the passages that i've just read you got 21 seconds extra yeah. 
You can take that time to relax what you've said and what I'm supposed to have spoken about. Then I'll recap. I'll use it to recap. Yeah, it's all right. Let him set it up. So recap. A Jew is writing in the first century and calling his God a God and Saviour. Black and white, as clear as day. Still three seconds. No one. There you go, man. So off you go. Wait. Sorry, bro. I'm just waiting for a physical copy of the Bible so I can demonstrate to you. Is anyone on the way? Are you happy with that? Yeah, no, yeah, I, don't I, I haven't. This is the first time I'm seeing this. Fine. Okay, so even yeah, go for it. You really understand it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So let me, uh, before you start, I just want to get to this passage. I can read it. So I begin in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Salutations and salam and salat Rasulullah. The proposal that you were supposed to be debating and offering evidence for was this. In Christ's own admission, where did he make it clear in black and white that he is the only true God of Israel? Few points. Who has to say? Christ himself. Right? Number one. What does he have to say in black and white? That he's not, he's just God? No. He's the true God. Just true God? No. Only true God. Just only true God? No. Only true God of Israel. Right. So the passage is in Titus 1, 13 to 14, and 2 Peter 1 to 2. Is Christ speaking there? No. Is it talking about the only true God? No, it says glory to our God. Is it talking about the God of Israel? No, it's not. No. So it failed in all four counts. So one minute and 27 <laughs> seconds, the debate is over. <laughs> so, <laughs> not really. But carry on, it's your oh, point. I'll give you another push. Okay, let me carry on then. Uh, oh, so maybe I should chance. give him opportunity now. In Next fact, chance. there's no point me giving refuting references. Like this is exactly what we try to do in Speaker's Corner. When our Christian friends offers us in support of their doctrines from the scripture, like as you are doing, we all, what we do is simply analyze and see whether they're adequate, sufficient, and clear, and not ambiguous. All the examples, the two examples you've given, is actually, none of them are clear to the debate that we are having, that Jesus himself says, in some way, shape, or another, I don't want a direct quote, some way he has to admit, that he is the only true God of Israel, the one and only true God of Israel, of course, the only one God of Israel. Instead of that, you've offered me this. So I should give you opportunity. Yeah, no problem. Give me, take another chance and start again yeah. by offering a <laughs> black and, black and white yeah. quote about what we're debating. Say Bismillah. Up start. to you. Yeah. <laughs> Still 10 seconds to go. It's your own. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Stop it. So, Mansour has subtly tried to change the terms of the debate. Oh, I haven't. Oh, 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 notice. Oh, notice. Oh, oh, notice. Oh, notice. Oh, notice. Oh, I have to fight for my three minutes, but Mansour doesn't. So, the fact of the matter is, we agreed that the terms of the debate would be the use of the whole New Testament. Yes. And it was not based purely on Christ's words. Nope, that was never, no. that, that was never admission. Now, the point of the matter is that we all know the rhetorical style that Mansour is going to use through this debate. Any evidence that he's presented, he will simply dismiss and say that he's unbelievable. 
However, what you have to do is what N.T. Wright, a, 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 an astounding English scholar of the New Testament, talks about. You have to read the text in the way that the people of the first century would read and understand. It isn't sufficient to simply say, I personally, subjectively, don't find this sufficient. It is based upon how the author, speaking to the audience to whom he is writing, would find it sufficient. And we find clearly in the literature of the New Testament, unequivocal descriptions of Christ as divine. Divine. We've just given you some. Mansour simply wishes to dismiss it, and I noticed that he did not actually address the question that I asked him. Oh, yeah. I'll remind you all of the question that Mansour avoided, which was, who was called God in the passages quoted? Mansour has avoided it once. Let us see if he avoids it again. However, let us add to our evidence. Let us add to our evidence. Another passage that Mansour will simply dismiss. A simple passage. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 11, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Now, this term, I am the good shepherd, he doesn't go on to explain it. Why? Because this is a category a conceptual category that the Jewish audience would have understood. Who is the Good Shepherd of Israel? Who is the Good Shepherd of Israel? Well, go and read the book of Ezekiel. Yahweh says and describes himself as the Good Shepherd. So when Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd, who is he calling himself? Well, how would the audience have heard that? We know how they would have heard it. They heard it as blasphemy. They heard it as a claim to divinity. It isn't good enough your subjective feelings, Mansour. You've got to engage with the literature. Now, notice how you've misunderstood the terms of the debates. I did not say you can use the entire New Testament to get a quote from Tom, Dick and Harry or anyone. I said you can use the entire New Testament to prove that Christ admits himself that he is the only true God of Israel. So don't take my proposal, misunderstand it and debate something different. Maybe that's what you're capable of, I don't know. I apologize if this is how it comes down to. So you failed to show in the first instance and you're trying to modify the debate which I'm not allowing you to and I will not allow. The second evidence that you're presenting, Jesus claims that he's the good shepherd. So if somebody comes along to children of Israel and they say, I'm the good shepherd, that's a blasphemy. And that means you're claiming to be God of Israel. Now, those of you who don't know in the Old Testament, even human beings, ordinary human beings, are called God by God. In Psalms 82, God says, to the human judges that you are gods sons of the mm. most high yeah. now if God calls them gods of course you can't follow and saying no they're not gods Elohim so if those judges came to these nations and said I am Elohim would that make them God of Israel would that make them God worthy of worship would that make them the Almighty God of course not even though they are called God. Jesus, ironically, was actually using this passage to refute allegation against him that he was claiming to be God. He quoted this passage. He says, I only said, I am Ben Elion. I am a son of God. In the Jewish phrase, a son of God is a righteous person because David is a son of God. Ephraim is a son of God. In the New Testament, Adam is a son of God. It is not unique and it doesn't make you God. So we have seen the examples that our Christian friends bring over and over again, and we demonstrate over and over and again, your evidence to support your own doctrines from your own texts are insufficient, inadequate, and ambiguous. In fact, the examples refute you. Like, 
Paul, you claim that Paul makes Jesus God. What does Paul say in Galatians or Ephesians? He says, grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you saying according to New Testament scholarship, Paul knew Jesus as God? Or Paul is saying God of Jesus Christ, meaning Jesus has a God who is God of Paul. Would you mind explaining that? Okay. So, unlike Mansour, who has avoided the question that was asked him very directly, notice again how I have to fight for my three minutes. But Mansour avoided the question that I asked him. So I'll ask him a third time when he comes back on his three minutes to address it. I quoted two letters, one from Paul, one from Peter in which Jesus is described as God in black and white. And I asked him just simply, it was a basic question, who is identified as God in those passages? So then, rather than deal with that, he goes to another one of Paul's letters, bearing in mind this is the same Paul who called Jesus God. And he also calls the Father God, from the text he quoted. So now we have Paul, calling Jesus God and we have Paul calling the Father God so we begin to see the emergence of a Trinitarian worldview we begin to see the emergence of a Trinitarian understanding of God where the Father is God and the Son is God also now how could it be that a Jew would believe in two gods Everyone here knows that Jews believe in a one God, monotheism. Monotheism is the Jewish context. So when Paul is saying that Jesus is God in his letter to Titus, and he is saying that the Father is God in his letter to Ephesians, obviously in his mind as a monotheist, there is only one God. So what conclusion do we draw? We draw that there is one God and there are two persons, the Father and the Son. Amen. That is what we draw. Now, I have addressed, I have addressed Mansour's point. Will Mansour now address my point? Point one in the letter of Titus and in the letter of Peter, who is identified as God? Point two. Jesus calls himself the Good Shepherd. My question to Mansour, according to Jesus, who alone is good? Finished? Yep. Bismillah. Now notice he misunderstood my reply. That in Galatians, that there is a God and there is a Lord. Lord. And the God of Jesus is the God that he identifies. If you have bothered to read New Testament scholarship and on Paul, about Paul, does not know a Trinitarian understanding of God, which you admitted today that Paul knows of So Paul was not a Trinitarian, he was a Binitarian. Not a Trinitarian. So you yourself admit that I'm a Trinitarian while I'm getting my proof text from a Binitarian. <laughs> what an understanding. So Paul is not a Trinitarian from his writings. Now the question you're asking me to explain or answer is in Titus and to Peter, who is this God? Yeah. Did you not notice in my subtle answer? Many people are called gods. <laughs> they can use this title, Theos or Elohim or El, but it doesn't mean God of Israel. Because the judges that I quoted in response to you, they are called Elohim and that doesn't mean, unless I'm mistaken, maybe, maybe there are gods which you worship, should worship, what to worship, because they are called gods. And not only people or a scribe calls them God, God himself, your God calls them God. So you should be 
standing upright and saying, I'm going to worship the judges in Psalms 82 because God calls them God. Unless you say, oh, by the word God doesn't mean God of Israel, the true, only true God. In John 17, 3, Jesus actually admits who the only true God is when we are asking about this question. According to Christ, I am going to ask you, not according to you or St. Paul, according to Christ's own admission, who is the only true God? According to Christ, because if he was God, he would have described himself who he is. Like God in the Old Testament describes that he is God. Before him there was no God form. After him there is no God form. He alone, him, alone is God and there is none else. Black and white about who God is. Being a black and white statement in the New Testament, Christ is saying something like that. Christ is saying Yep. So, Mansour says, bring me a black and white statement where Jesus calls himself God. Well, firstly, to do that, we have to establish where Yahweh gives himself a title. So let us look at a title that Yahweh gives to himself as a divine title. I would encourage Mansour to read Isaiah 48. Listen. And ask yourself, as people who believe in God, who is speaking? Listen to me, O Jacob, even Israel. So it's God speaking to Israel, whom I called. I am He. I am the first. I am the last. Did you all hear that? Yahweh is speaking to Israel. And he says, I am the first and I am the last. You've all heard that. Those titles, incidentally, are also in your Quran. Allah calls himself the first and the last. But today I'm not here to debate why Muhammad stole the divine names of Jesus and gave them to Allah. I'm talking about what Yahweh said to Israel. Yahweh says to Israel, I am the first and I am the last. Now listen to the words of Jesus in Revelations. Behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Case closed. Case closed. Case closed. Case closed. Yahweh says to Israel, first and the last. Jesus says, I am the first and the last. So since you've avoided all my other questions, Mansour, let me ask you this question. According to the Bible, who is the first and the last? Yahweh or Jesus? Whilst you're pondering your answer to that one, Let's just clarify who's speaking in the Old Testament. In case you were any, in any doubt, it's Yahweh. He goes on to say, Surely my hand founded the earth, my right hand spread out the heavens. When I called them, they stand together. Is that not the description of a creator? Is he not speaking to a Jewish prophet? called Isaiah and addressing the people of Israel saying I am the first and the last the title Jesus uses interestingly again Can we step that this way? may be a debate strategy our Christian friends play so for the benefit of the audience let me present it to you I never asked you to present Jesus as saying I'm God you keep missing 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 my point i am saying christ has to admit in some shape or form he is the only true god of israel not just god because there are many because there are many gods there are many gods can you not interrupt can you not interrupt please they're just laughing at your man so there are many gods in the bible there are many gods people claiming to be god right 
The devil may claim to be God if he wants to. Jesus or whoever, the point is, where does he say, I am the only true God of Israel? Now notice what he doesn't present any verse from the entirety of the New Testament to present this. Instead, what he does is saying, oh, I am Alpha and Omega. Now look at the problem of this verse and why it's inadequate, insufficient. In Isaiah, as I quoted to you already, which you may have forgotten, God of the Old Testament, God of Israel says, I alone am God and there is none else. We agree. Notice the word. Amen. Notice the word. Amen. None else. Amen. When God says, I alone am God, he is who? The Father in the understanding of the Trinitarians. So the Father says, I alone am God. There is no God before me, no God after me. Amen. I am the first and the last. There is none else. Amen. Now, if someone comes along and says, I am also Alpha, I am also first and, and the last, they are contradicting the Father. and inventing some statement on the mouth. This is what the Quran says. They have invented these hmm. descriptions. Because if the Father is the only true God and there is no one else, can there be someone else who can say, I am also Alpha, I am also Omega? No. Of course not. So, having said this, according to Christ himself, who is the only true God? The cartoon character hasn't responded yet. So maybe in the course of our discussion, maybe towards the end, if God is so merciful on him, he will come up with the answer. If he doesn't, maybe I will tell you. But the way, he, here's the hint. According to Christ, it wasn't him, the only true God. So over to you, Mr. Cartoon character. Now notice the childish name calling. <laughs> but, but did you notice That's your name, that at it? no point tonight has Mansour answered any question I asked? Let's just recap the questions I asked him. I asked him who in the letter of Peter and in the, to the letter of Titus is identified as God. We had no answer. I asked him who is the good shepherd. Sorry, who did Jesus say is the good? Only good. Only the good. only good. Because Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. That's what Jesus said. But Jesus also said, what did he say? You all know it, Dawah team, because you use it every week. Yeah. <laughs> there is none good but God. So if Jesus says he is the good shepherd, who is he calling himself? God. Thank you. God. The Christians have got it. Furthermore, I asked him, I asked him, who is the first and who is the last? The Yahweh of Isaiah or Jesus of Revelations. Because Yahweh in Isaiah says, I am the first and the last. Jesus in Revelations says, he is the first and the last. You can't have two firsts, only one first. And you can't have two lasts, which means either we have a contradiction as he wants to make out, or Jesus is claiming to be God. But he didn't answer that. Now, he said, he said that this was the Father speaking. He said that this couldn't be anyone but the Father. You see, that's the problem when you come to a debate, Mansour, and all you do is pick and choose your verses. You didn't know the passage because this is how it continues. Are you listening? After talking about being the first and the last, stretching out the heavens and founding the earth, listen to what comes next further down in the passage. I have brought him and he will make his way successful. Come near to me. Listen to this. From the first, I have not spoken in secret. From the time it took place, I was there. Listen. And now the Lord God has sent me with his spirit. Trinity in the Old Testament. 
He doesn't know what he's talking about, ladies and gentlemen. He goes around the corner saying that the texts are not there. He simply is not reading them. He's not engaging with them like he won't now. So, did you notice the debate has now gone into... Does... Is there any indication the New or the Old Testament? That's not what we're debating. We are debating this proposal. Where does Christ admit, says he's the only true God of Israel? Which, out of all the references you've given, none of them indicate that. All your allusions to is to confer divinity, confer some uprightness, whatever. That is not what we're debating. If by calling yourself good shepherd, as I already explained, makes you God. So when all the prophets who were shepherds and they said, I'm a good shepherd, I am a good them, shepherd. It, Ash, them, not it will make them, it will make them God. Just because somebody says, I am good shepherd. What if Shepherds somebody says, good shepherd. Okay. A good shepherd. what if somebody says, I am Elohim, would that make them God? Of course it doesn't and it didn't, as in Psalms 82. So why are you avoiding this clear, unambiguous, black and white verse where people can be called Elohim? It doesn't make them God. If the author of Titus or Second Peter wants to address Christ as God, what's the Greek word used there? I don't know the Greek word. I'll you don't know. Say whatever, right? Greek word which indicates God. If this was the case, I am saying still it would not indicate that Christ is the only true God of Israel. So notice, I asked him, according to Christ himself, did he ever say, I am the only true God of Israel? He didn't. He said, I am the way, the life. He said, he said instead, in John 17, 3, what did he say? Since you are not going to admit to bring this forward, it says what? According to Christ, I'm paraphrasing, according to Christ, the only true God is the Father, not Christ himself. So now we have only true God. Who is the Father to the Christians at that time and the Jewish audience? is the God of Israel. So according to Christ's own admission, the only true God is the Father who is the only true God. Christ himself proclaims this. Your passages from here and there is not going to work. Bring a clear passage like I have done now in John 17, 3, where Christ clearly points to who the only true God is. Are you able to do that? No, yeah. Uh, silence says a lot. Ready? Uh, yeah. It's not my time, mate. Be patient. I've got to wait for the timer. I've got to wait for the timer. You should have done timer, Bob. Right. Sorry, can we start again? Because I was dealing with that. Okay. So notice, ladies and gentlemen, Mansour has not dealt with the questions. Let's refresh. What are the questions? He's dealt with the one in Titus. He's dealt with the one in Titus by admitting that it does identify Jesus as God. Thank you very much. Case closed. Now he's turning around. But then he says, but then he ignores the statement about the Good Shepherd and then he tries to rephrase the passage to say, ah, Good Shepherd. Jesus doesn't say, I am a good shepherd, one amongst many. He says, I am the good shepherd. Because Israel, Israel, Israel. Are you going to leave the Bible or? Oh, sorry. Do you realize that? Yeah, someone's going to Do you need it or? No, no, you have it. Good, because I'm going to go home and I'd like to take my. Thank you. Cheers. Good luck. It's wasting time with this guy. He's extremist. Bye, Paul. Bye, preacher. Bye, Paul. Bye, Paul. Right, ready. Maybe you guys should construct the So, so. He didn't deal with the fact that Christ said, I am the Good Shepherd. Why is that important? One, because contrary to the way that he rephrased it, Christ doesn't say, I am a Good Shepherd. He says, I am the Good Shepherd. And two, Christ says, I am good. And Christ said, no one is good but God. And I asked him, who is good according to Jesus? God. And Jesus calls himself 
the good shepherd. He didn't deal with that. Read Ezekiel. Yahweh describes himself as a shepherd. That is an archetype within the Jewish paradigm of Yahweh. And Jesus claims it for himself. And then he said, show me what Jesus says in his own words. So I, we had to categorize, we had to clarify what would count as Jesus using his own words. Which meant that we had to see where Yahweh describes himself and then see if Jesus uses that description of himself. And he does. And we showed it. And it wasn't an illusion. It wasn't a, a passing reference. It was a word for word identification. Yahweh says, I am the first and the last. Jesus says, I am the first and the last. And I asked Mansour, so who is the first and the last? The Yahweh of Isaiah or the Jesus of the New Testament? And he didn't address the point. All he's doing is shuffling. All he's doing is trying to come out with erudite descriptions that these are not satisfactory rather than engaging with the evidence. And I would like him to engage with the evidence. I'll return to John 17, the Father is the only true God in my next three minutes. Right. Notice the focus has become on the word the good shepherd. So if the Psalms 82 judges were called Elohim, would that make them God? Elohim is already the. Why? Because it is a proper noun already, Elohim. So are you now suggesting the judges in Psalms 82, who God describes them as Elohim, and he says, these are my sons of the Most High. He describes them as sons as well of the Most High. So you admit, according to your consistent logic, Mr. Cartoon character, that you have more than one gods now, including, including, including those judges, <laughs> human judges. So congratulations on you now being a very much polytheistic in your understanding where Desperate. God is not a Trinitarian, Desperate. God includes human judges. Now you talk about Christ saying he's a good, good, the good shepherd. And he says, I am good. And you misquote the scripture. Did he not say, don't call me good, for there is no one who is good but God? He says, don't call me good. Excuse me, correct me right now if I'm mistaken. You are mistaken. Right, so he's going to point in his own time from the scripture where Christ didn't say, don't call me good. Because I have read a long time ago, which is, why, yeah, yeah. why do you call me good? Why do you call me good? Right, so obviously you need questioning. Right, now the, notice again, I am the first and the last issue. I gave you several verses from the Old Testament where God is saying, before me there was no one, after me there is no one. I alone am God and there is none else. So if God in the Old Testament, the God of who? Israel, described he's the only God and there's no one else and he described himself as Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Can there be another Alpha and another Omega when he says there is none else? No, 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 if no. you are consistent and logical, maybe the cartoon characters are not logical no. and consistent. <laughs> yeah. That is why the That's problem right. arises. If you were consistent and logical, you will understand that according to the Old Testament, understanding and depiction of God, the Father, God of Israel, he is Alpha and Omega, or the first and the last, and there is none else, meaning there cannot be another Alpha, another first, and another last or another Omega. Anyone who comes and claims this are simply not the God of Israel, because the God of Israel alone is God, as explained and depicted in the Hebrew Old Testament. I hope you understand what I'm saying rather than formulating your next response. <laughs> yep. Ready. So, Mansour has again avoided the question. Standard phrase. Who was, who was the first and the last? Yahweh or Jesus? However, I won't avoid his points like he is avoiding mine. So I'm going to use this three minutes 
to address the three main strands of his argument. And if he wants to dodge my argument, then that is what he can do. But the cameras will show he is avoiding the points that I'm making. Let's just deal with the question about um, the question about the good teacher. Yes. So, in Mark chapter 10, verse 17, a rich young ruler comes to Jesus and says, as he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, did Jesus say, as Mansour quoted him, as saying, don't call me good? No, he didn't say that. This is the actual response that Jesus gave. He said, why do you call me good? Why do you call me good? Not, don't call me good. So he's not saying to him, you're wrong for calling me good. He's saying, why do you call me good? Because only God is good. So if you recognize that I am good, because Jesus himself said, I am the good shepherd, are you recognizing that I am God? That is the correct understanding of the passage, Mansour. And if you bothered to read anything more than a pamphlet from Zaki and Nike, you would have known that yourself. Now, he quoted the Psalms to defend against the letter of Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, I suggest that Mansour actually reads some scholarship. And I suggest to him that he reads N.T. Wright. Because N.T. Wright talks about this. He talks about the literary form. The Psalms are poetry. They use poetic language. When God inspired the Psalmist writers to address the judges as gods, this is in poetic form with poetic license. The letter that was written to Titus, by contrast, was not a poem. It was not using poetic imagery. It was making a black and white statement that Jesus was God. He's reading different literary forms as if they're all the same, rather than treating poems as poems and instruction letters as instruction letters. <laughs> the strategy you have been playing all along, Mansour is avoiding, when every time I'm responding, maybe there's a comprehension problem from your side, God willing, one day, may God increase you in your comprehension. I pray sincerely, right? Amen. I have been <laughs> I explaining, <laughs> I have been explaining, but somehow there's some misunderstanding from maybe your part or whatever. Maybe I'm not explaining well. Okay, I'll, let me take the blame. But I am explaining your points, which you cannot even connect the twos and the two dots and eyes together. Now, John 17, 3, something that you'll come back, so we will focus on this because we want to know why you're avoiding this, maybe towards the end. Now, no, because it should be sent from the very beginning. So, so far, I can say clearly, out of all that time that we had, have you provided any unambiguous, clear, sufficient verse where Christ is claiming, demonstrating he is the only true God of Israel? No, you haven't. It is quite evident, the only things that you're bringing up are like requiring interpretation, good shepherd, this, that and so on, bringing anti bringing anti writer a poetic license. Are you suggesting seriously that this is not true when the authors were inspired to write? But when they said, you're Elohim, son of the Most High, it doesn't mean they're Elohim, the son of the Most High. It's a lie in the form of a poetic imagery, poetic license. Is that what you're suggesting? It's a lie in the book of God when it's not true. Is that what you're suggesting? But no, very well really. we know, not very well we know not that whatever you want to say it, it's quite clear, okay. black and yeah, white, cold. it says yeah, Elohim, cold. son of the Most High, and yet it doesn't make them God. So my point stands, people, the authors of the New Testament can say about Christ or about any Tom, Dick and Harry that he is Theos, he is God, it <laughs> doesn't make them God. Remember how the Quran refutes them, people bring all these ascriptions and, and att att attributions to people think, oh, he's God, he's God, Quran refutes them all. No, they are not divine, they are not God, even though you are naming them God. Quran even says people make their own desires as God. 
Is it really God? No, but it refutes the concept. But it is not God. So, so, so the question now is to you clearly: Have you? Of course, you haven't provided anything. Are you going to provide any statement from Christ where he is identifying himself not as God, Goddess, Godson, God Brother, anything, Good Shepherd, First, Last, unambiguous, clear, black and white, the word we agreed on, black and white statement, where he's saying, I am the only true God of Israel. When are you going to do this, Mr. Cartoon Character? I will call you Cartoon Character unless you give me your name. <laughs> Bob. That's not your name. So, so, guys, like, it's getting to the point of ridiculousness. I agree. The case is mounting up against Mansour's position. And rather than simply address that, what he does is he narrows the category of permissible evidence to such narrow constraints that if I was to use a similar standard and apply it to basic Islamic beliefs, Islam would fail. Because I'm not going to do it now and nor am I going to ask Mansour to address it. But I want to give an example of how I could do the same. I would say to him, show me in the Quran where it says in black and white, use literature called Hadith to interpret the Quran. Such a statement he could not verify. He couldn't do it. So he's using a rhetorical illusion. He is trying to say you have to match this formula of words because you can't use other words to say the same. It has to be in these words. However, to any erudite, intelligent and sincere person who is engaging with the evidence, you wouldn't look for a formulae. You would take the evidence that is there and if the evidence said the same, even if it did it in other words, that would be acceptable to you. But Mansour is not sincere. He is not sincerely engaging with the text. Now, I want to use my remaining time to address John 17. So, Jesus does call God the Father the only true God. We've never denied it. We've never denied it. Because our understanding of God is taken from the entire New Testament. Congratulations. And so, it calls Jesus God, it calls the Father God, and it calls the Holy Spirit God, and it says there's one God. Listen to what Jesus goes on to say in the same passage that Mansour quotes. Listen, Mansour. Listen, Mansour. Listen. Listen. So, after he says, you the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Case closed again. Christ is saying, before the world was, he exists with the Father and has the glory of the Father. Most, oh, I'm running out of time, so I'll have to pick up this point in my next three minutes. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. And the glory which now, you gave me, I have given them. Notice again, oh, friend, friend, friend. Notice again the problem Mr. Cartoon character is facing in this debate failing time after time to provide a reference from Christ that Christ is the only true God we've come to the culmination the conclusion which he agreed right in the last segment that according to the admission of Christ the only true God is identified who did Christ identify as the only true God it is the father not Christ so the case is indeed closed, my friend. <laughs> so, I think there's no point going any further since you do run away. Since you're since you're admitting with very sincerity that the only true God is the Father, not anyone else. 
according to Christ himself, there is nothing further to add. The only thing, only thing that I want to address is this few bits and pieces that you keep bringing. I am not asking you to provide some kind of divine attributes of Christ. Oh, Christ pre-existed. So he must be the only true God of Israel. Imagine now this. Let's look at it logically. If Christ pre-existed in your argument, does that make him the only true God of Israel? No, it no, doesn't. Yes, it doesn't. No, it does. doesn't. Yes, it does. Because the only true God of Israel is, according to Christ's admission, who? Is the Father. Is the Father. Not only that, according to the Father himself, God in the Old Testament, the only true God is the one who has no one else with him. And there is none else. If you bring someone else, I don't think you understand logic or even mathematics. Look, look. So what I would suggest is, you know, after this, reflect. Reflect. Don't take it personally. Reflect. If Christ and his God, remember, Christ himself says he has a God. I am going to my God and your God, right? He has a God. If Christ himself says his God is the only true God, why and who are you and me to say Christ is the only true God of Israel? I don't think this is even debatable. If the one person who we are debating about Christ himself says the only true God is the Father who is the God of the Jewish people and everyone else, not Moses, not him, not anyone else. Why is there a debate? I don't no. get it. Why is there I don't debate? get it. Why? Is it because you already have this belief formed and now you have to justify your wrong belief? Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Oh, but why? Time. Indeed. Indeed. I would invite you to reflect on the fact that Mansour has dealt with none of the evidence. That Mansour has ignored a clear statement by Jesus where he identifies himself as Yahweh on multiple occasions. I invite you to reflect on that fact. Because Mansour only has a rhetoric. He doesn't have an argument. And his argument is based upon the manipulation of the text. So, I know it's laughable, but we should stop laughing. He said, he said that if someone has the attribute of God, does that make them the God of Israel? That was what he said. And do you remember when he quoted from Isaiah saying that I am God alone and there is none else? So who else could have the divine attributes but God? So if Jesus has the divine attributes of God, who can he be? According to the Old Testament, the Father. That is why. Yeah. That is why, Mansour, you are wrong. That is why, Mansour, you are wrong. No, let's go a bit further, because Muslims often demand of us, "Where does Jesus say I am God? Worship me." Well, we've established where Jesus says I am God. So now let me show you where he says, worship me. In his dreams, in his dreams. Let, let me show you. Notice how the Muslims heckle. So, in John chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son. Notice, Trinitarian language. Father, Son. Notice the divine attribute. The Father is not going to judge you. The Son is going to judge you. So that all will honor the Son even as they honor the Father. Mansour has already demonstrated that the Father is the true God of Israel. John 17. Jesus is saying, honor me as you honor the Father. So if the Father is God, how should you honor Jesus as God? It's logical. And just to drive that point home, in the Greek, the word honor, in the Greek, when I can get my phone to work, sorry, one second. In, in the Greek, the word that is used there is timiao. Timiao means to affix a value to something. What value do you give to God? It's infinite value, is it not? Worthy of your life resources? Well, Jesus is saying, honor me the Son as you honor the Father. Worship me, in other words.
Same. Case closed. Conclusion from me and then... It just did. I'm ready to you. Do you want to conclusion? Yeah, so I can say you can have your conclusion. We will do conclusions. Okay, here is my key point, right? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah. Um, those of you who are watching this discussion debate and those who are watching or will be watching later on, please ponder and reflect on the subject that we're discussing who indeed have worshipped the Islamic concept of God or the Christian concept of God which Bob, the cartoon character which he called himself, didn't want to engage with for his own reasons. We want to engage with the discussion. So if you are afraid of some kind of, of some concern because you only think that if we really discuss this then the truth will come out, then let us be the lovers of truth. Because truth is something that we should uphold. If truth is indeed in the worship of one God, not a tri Trinitarian or Son of God, let it be, my friend, let it be. So, what I would like people to reflect more on this issue is this. The New Testament has been scribed by various people. Some, according to scholarship, we know the scribes of authors, some we don't. You are relying on a scripture which you call scripture on people that you don't know who wrote it some you do some you don't and you think this is going to be giving you salvation hereafter on unknown authors who knows what they are talking to you about god what attribution they have done to god but in islam it's otherwise we have the speech of god all of it not the speech of muhammad in the quran muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and well, clear black and white. Allah says in the Quran, La ilaha illahu, there is no God besides Him. So worship Him. If that was indeed the mission of Christ, our messenger, which you have insulted us in our understanding by elevating Him in, in a deity of some kind, He should have said the same thing. Worship me. He should have said that Tell in some again. way or other. He should, have, he, should have, he should have made it black and white that I am God of Israel. Tell him again. I am indeed the God of Israel. Instead, he's saying, worship the one in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. Worship the Father, worship the Father. Throughout, I am going to my Father and your, your Father, my God and your God. Throughout, Honor the only yes, true God, the only oh, true God Honor is the, yes, Father. the Father. Yeah. And he gives the glory that he has, that God gave him to his disciples. That doesn't make his disciples God, does it? Be consistent. The glory that he receives from God, he gives it to disciples. And yet, it doesn't make them God. So why would the honor make him God as well? So please, open up the Quran, people. And you I mean, will see what the true tell him again, belief man. is. So, <laughs> my final comments when the time is ready. You see, there came a point in my life being a Muslim. Revelations of the Quran. And I found in them inconsistencies, contradictions, factual errors. In a book that was being claimed by Muslims to be perfect. So by the Islamic own acid test. I rejected the Quran, or at least its translation. Now, in terms of the hadiths, I found problems there as well, because Muslims were telling me that these hadiths were reliable, but then as I met more Muslims, I realized that the Muslims themselves could not agree about which hadiths were reliable. And we see that in the park today. Whenever a hadith embarrasses the Dawah team, it's not reliable, even if it's Sahih. But if it's something that makes Islam look good, then it's reliable. So I can't take lectures about authorship from Mansour. No, Mansour ignored the evidence. We always knew he was going to do that. That's why he comes here every week and has done so for 20 years. However, for those of you that are sincere in heart, for those of you that are genuinely searching for the truth, I invite you to consider carefully what you heard. Jesus takes the titles of Yahweh and in identical words applies them to himself. Jesus ascribes divine attributes to himself. Jesus calls himself in Jewish paradigms divine.
categories that are only given to Yahweh. Jesus himself says that you are to honor him as you honor God. As you honor God. How can you do that unless he is God? That is what Jesus did. And Mansour ignored it all. He might want to ignore the evidence because that evidence contradicts his belief. But that truth, ladies and gentlemen, is the very truth upon which our salvation depends. If we do not accept Christ for who he is, then we are rejecting God. We are rejecting the one who will judge us. We are rejecting the one who can save us. And that is why this debate is about salvation. And it is why you have to consider who Christ claimed to be. Because he either is God or he was a madman. One thing that he wasn't was merely a prophet. Take care, Mansour. That's right. it. Thank you. Thank so you, Mansour. Congratulations of making Jesus the Father. Is a Christian not heresy? What no, not it's a what Christian heresy. Not what I did. That's what you implied. If your argument is all characterization, you're going to get nowhere. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Bro, remember, no, I'm a Trinitarian. No, no, debate is over. I'm a Trinitarian. I'm just, I'm not just, a monarch. I'm, I'm, I'm just correcting Jesus, the, the conclusion that you've derived no, from the evidence. No, you're which not. Was, no, no, you're not. You're like, not. You're not. You're not. You remember what you said? Jesus is Alpha he wants, and Omega. He feels beat, so he wants to keep it going. He I, feels beat, so he no, wants to keep it going. I am You're congratulating you right. for being a Christian heretic. No, not by at all. By calling Jesus, uh, admitting Jesus I'll let him make his point and then I'll address yeah, yeah. it. So you said, who else would Jesus be? Because if the Father says he's Alpha and Omega, Jesus says Alpha and Omega, so who then Jesus would be? Jesus would be the Father. Father. That is the logical conclusion that you made. So congratulations, or maybe a correction you can correct later. I'll correct you now. Go on, correct me then. Basically, the correction is this. His premise of the argument is that all the theophanies seen in the Old Testament were the Father. He's wrong. The theophanies in the Old Testament were the Son. That's the correction. In the New Testament, it clearly makes distinctions between the Father and the Son. We've read them today. You heard them. Jesus is saying to the Father and calling himself the Son. But the New Testament is clear. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. They're all called God in a paradigm in which only one God exists. So there you have one God and three persons. Case closed. Suddenly the gods become persons. <laughs> but anyway, Bob, is that what your real name is? Bob you can call me Bob. Bob no, no, what's your real name? No, you're not having my real name. Sure. No, you're not having my real name. No. Doesn't matter. Doesn't, Doesn't matter. matter. Doesn't, matter. Doesn't matter. matter. Anyway, it was nice but debating why, with you. Why, why choose a cartoon character? I didn't. If you remember, when we first debated... <laughs> you said irrelevant. I called myself irrelevant. Yeah. And then you called me Mr. Irrelevant. Yeah, and then we ended up having a silly argument about that. And then someone shouted out from the crowd, his name's Bob, call him Bob. And I just went with it. That's it. Have a nice name. Everyone else stuck yeah. the builder onto it. I just went with Bob. And then everyone else went Bob the Builder. And I just ran with it. That's all. Sure. Anyway, Mansour, that was anyway, a very pleasant debate. Anyway, reflect on it, what we've said. Please and do. The, and the proposal that... <laughs> Please do. No, proposal of the debate. Please do. That, what was the topic that we we're discussing? Yes. Not about yes. his deity, but about the actual topic. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Take anyway, care. look after yourself. Take Thank care. You Thank you, Mansour. Bob, do you do love conversions? I want to turn into a masjid. <laughs> Um, no, but I know some people that do. Yeah, we were talking about Aldo Carey that time. So let's do a wrap up. Oh, you never know. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that guy, Bob. Yeah. Just love everyone. Who's your friend? Yeah, yeah. Like the thing. We'll, we'll talk about that when we meet. I'm going to call you, bro. You look after yourself, yeah? too, my bro. Okay? So, guys, you've seen today, right? Finally, when Mansour agreed to some kind of debate, yeah? That, that he had no argument. He had no argument. His argument was based simply upon ignoring texts that he found didn't work with his argument. Yes, he quoted texts that showed that Christ had a human nature and showed that the Father is God distinct from himself. But as Christians, that's what we already believe. He's not actually arguing against my belief. He's just confirming part of my belief. But it's only part of the picture. Then when we quoted verses that show the other part of the picture, Mansour just wanted to avoid them. He wanted to ignore them. 
He wanted to just skip over them and move on to the next reference or repeat the point that he'd made before, rather than engaging with the text. So let's recap. Jesus calls himself, quite literally, God. He says, I am the first and I am the last, which is what Yahweh calls himself in the Old Testament. He says, he uses categories that would have been understood by his audience as being categories of the divine. I am the good shepherd. That is an Old Testament imagery of Yahweh. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Now, Mansour misquoted two texts. He said, I am a good shepherd. That's not what the text said. The text said, I am the good shepherd. That, that, that the is quite important because there was only one good shepherd, the absolute good shepherd in the mind of Israel, the monotheists of the Jewish nation. God, not a good shepherd, the good shepherd. But then also, he misquoted the text where Jesus said, why do you call me good? Asking someone, why have you done that, is not the same as saying, you should not do that, don't do it. Those are not the same statement. If I give a gift to Mansour, and he says to me, why did you give me a gift? That isn't the same as saying, don't give me a gift. Jesus said to the rich man, why do you call me, why do you call me good? Not don't call me good. It isn't a denial. He's saying, why do you call me good? Only God is good. In other words, rich man, are you saying I'm God? That's what Jesus is saying. Now, Christ also gives to himself divine attributes. And as, as um, Mansour pointed out, Yahweh is clear. There's only one God. So if Christ is giving himself divine attributes, only God can have them. So what does that make Jesus? God. I'm glad we had this debate because right at the beginning, even before we got into the official debate, Mansour admitted that the New Testament shows that Jesus is God. And it said it in black and white in Titus and 1 Peter. Black and white, Jesus is the God and Savior. God and Savior. In Isaiah, God Yahweh says, I am your God and Savior and there is none else. So if Jesus is called the God and Savior, whose God is he? Israel's. And that was written by a Jew. Now, Mansour says, Mansour said that it wasn't black and white. I don't know how much more black and white it needs to be, Mansour. But you've admitted that the New Testament teaches that Jesus is God. You admitted that even before the debate. So we won't see you going now around the park, picking on Christian tourists and saying the opposite, will we? But we know we will, because we know you're not sincere in what you're saying, Mansour. Mansour, the evidence is there for you. You simply need to believe it, if you have faith. And to those of you who listen to that debate, go away and research all the passages. Go away and read those passages yourself. And ask yourself, if this Christ is truly the God that he is claiming to be, what does that mean for you? What does that mean for you if Jesus is God, for your life and the way you live and the choices you make and the God that you worship? Because that's the, the point. If Jesus truly is who he claims to be, it has to change everything for us. And that means that some of you who are watching this need to reorientate your life towards the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thanks be to him.